So, on today's show, a look back at optimization, because potentially, when you start doing exam three tonight, potentially there might be a question on optimization, max and min, and how do you know what's what. So let's remind us and the folks at home about optimization. Yes, derivative equals zero. That's all there is to it. Uh, let's see. Let's determine and classify all critical points. Uh, critical points are those awesome things. Uh, you and I both learned this a long time ago. Critical points are all places where the derivative is zero or where the derivative does not exist. And by classify them, I want to figure out if they're maxes or mins or neither. So let's see. Let's go with the KDJ rule. The KDJ rule says that a, if I'm going to optimize that, boy, I hope the microphone picked that up. Derivative equals zero. So here we go. Here's derivative. That's, uh, oh boy, it's like I planned this. Nice looking derivative. You're a nice looking derivative. Wow, that's that's creepy. Everybody's favorite F word, factor. It is. Flounder is also a good one for those people that live near the ocean. <laughs> they live near the ocean. Flounder's a big deal for them. That's that's going to get you a visit to the principal's office is what that's going to get you. Two X's, where are they? <laughs> there they are. There they are. My favorite F word is Friday. Friday. Getting down on Friday. Fun is a close second, I suppose. So here we go. Um, two ways to classify them. Way one is to come up with an F prime chart. On my F prime chart, there are only two places where the derivative could be zero or change sign. Those are the two places. So I've got to know what the signs are on any side of either of those. And so I just substitute my favorite number that's less than negative two into the derivative, or my favorite number between negative two and four into the derivative, or my favorite number greater than four into the derivative, or I consider that this is a happy parabola, and happy parabolas start high, go low, and then swing back around. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. So what now, uh, th what does that mean? That means that the function itself changes from increasing to decreasing to increasing. And so we would conclude that x equals negative 2, f of x has a max, and at x equals 4, f of x has a min, and we would not let our sign chart be our justification. We would actually write f of x has a max because f prime changes from positive to negative. We would actually write f of x has a min because f prime changes from negative to positive. It is not, on, not enough to say f of x changes from increasing to decreasing. You have to make an argument from a derivative, f prime changes from negative to positive. Uh, the other way to skin the cat, if you don't want to go with a sign chart, and a sign chart's fine, the other way is to consider f double prime of x. f double prime of x is 6x minus 6. 
And so if I want to know what's going on at negative 2, f double prime at negative 2 is negative 18, which is less than 0. What is the significance of f double prime being less than 0? Right, the, the function itself is concave down. And since the function itself is concave down, I know that f of negative 2 is a max, and the way I write that is I say since f prime of 2 is 0 and f double prime of 2 is negative. Um, some of us in our homeworks are, are kind of careless. We write things like the derivative. Be very specific. f prime dy dx second derivative we don't we don't write out the second derivative we name it because the second derivative there could be multiple second derivatives and so you want to nail it down you want to say f prime or f double prime uh, similarly f of prime uh, f double prime of four is positive and so we've got a min there and i'm out of space on the slide so i'm going to hit next slide next slide consider the following Ooh, this is nasty. Consider x squared y plus y squared is 5. Determine um, all critical points. Determine. Some German word, I think. Uh, determining, let's see, all critical points. Critical points are places where dy dx is 0 or dy dx does not exist. So here we go. But I have to show that on an AP test. Never a bad place to start. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. I'll take the derivative of the right side. Give me the derivative of the left side. G, thanks, doesn't count. The product rule is so much fun. It's the first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And then the second thing is y squared. So you just do 2y dy dx. That's the chain rule. So we got to find dy dx. <laughs> Give me a dy dx. Negative 2xy over suck. So all I want to do is have some fun. I've got a feeling I'm not the only one. All I want to do is have some fun. If dy dx is 0, that means that negative 2xy is 0, which means that x is 0 or y is 0. Which of those situations is, as Ralph Wiggum would call it, unpossible? Why is y equals 0 unpossible? Correct. When you sub back in up there, you get 0 equals 5, which it doesn't. So if x is 0, you get y squared equals 5. So y is either plus or minus root 5. So now I've got two critical points to check out. I've got 0 radical 5. And I've got 0, negative radical 5. If I want to know if those are min or max points, I've got to find the second derivative of our equation here. Let's see how good we are at this stuff. It's the bottom times the derivative of the top. What's the derivative of the top? The product rule is so much fun. It's 1 prime 2 plus 2 prime 1. 
minus. <laughs> Stop times the derivative of the bottom. For the rest, you won't be scared. It's all over the bottom squared. So you keep saying we won't be scared, and yet somehow I tremble. Somehow I tremble. So at zero radical five, the second derivative is, oh, you'll love this. Uh, zero squared plus two radical five, that's two radical five times, we know the derivative is zero at our key values. We know that. So that's nay is zero minus two radical five minus, that's got an x in it, that's zero. That's got an x in it, that's zero. So that's done. Then the bottom is two radical five squared, and that turns out to be negative one. What does that mean about zero radical five? Max. Now, I will tell you because I mean it, zero negative radical five also has a second derivative of negative one which means zero minus radical five is also a max, which is kind of hard to do if you think about it. That's kind of hard to do to have one point above the other and they're both maxes. This is why we do not ask you to graph this stuff. Um, critical points are also places where the derivative does not exist. If the derivative does not exist, then this has to be zero. And so that means that x squared is negative 2y, and then we sub that back in, negative 2y times y plus y squared is 5, and that doesn't have a solution. Am I right? That doesn't have a solution. And so we only have two critical points, and they're both maxes. Yay! Say goodbye to the folks at home. There we go.